Egypt. Over 3,000 years ago, one of the most dominant empires in ancient history. It was during Egypt's 18th dynasty that a young boy became king, a boy whose name may never have been written in history had it not been for a last-ditch archaeological dig in the final resting place of the pharaohs, a sacred place known as the Valley of the Kings. That's where a British archaeologist uncovered a remarkable secret buried beneath the bedrock, the tomb of King Tutankhamun, a tomb still intact and filled with golden artifacts. Among the treasures, bits and pieces of clues that told the story of who Tutankhamun was, a boy who at the young age of eight or nine inherited an empire in upheaval, a kingdom he ruled for only 10 short years. And how did he die? Was it murder or an accident? Forensic science is now providing us with some answers. And for the first time, there is solid evidence to answer the questions, who really built the great pyramids of Giza? And just what's buried beneath the mysterious Sphinx? Tonight, we reveal it all, and we'll take a closer look at the mystery of the curse. Is it still striking to this day? We uncover it all in anticipation of the most famous exhibit to tour U.S. soil, now on its way to Dallas. So join me now is we bring you face to face with one of the legendary rulers of all time, King Tut, the boy, the monarch, the mystery. Good evening, I'm Tracy Rowlett. Tonight, the incredible story of Tutankhamun, the boy king, how he lived, and the mysterious way in which he died. We'll also tell you how his tomb was discovered and show you some of the treasure that was found there. And of course, we'll also tell you about the curse. So stay with us now for Tutankhamun and the Golden Age of the Pharaohs. The year was 1922. The location on the west bank of the Nile, across the river from Luxor, in the Valley of the Kings. British archeologist Howard Carter, backed by the finances of aristocrat Lord Carnarvon, unearthed what turned out to be one of the most important archeological finds of all time, the tomb of King Tutankhamun. This tomb was the only one of the royal tombs in the valley to be found still filled with its riches almost entirely intact, locked away, virtually untouched for more than 3,000 years. But finding it had been no easy task. After five years of fruitless excavation, Lord Carnarvon's patience and money were running thin. That's when Carter made Carnarvon an offer he couldn't refuse. Dr. David Silverman is professor of Egyptology at the University of Pennsylvania and the curator of the exhibit, King Tutankhamun and the Golden Age of the Pharaohs. Howard Carter was very upset over the fact that Lord Carnarvon had said that this last season would be his actual last season because nothing really significant had been found. And Howard Carter was very anxious to continue, so he said to Lord Carnarvon, if you will let me have one more season, I will pay for it, and then if we find something, you can compensate me. And Lord Carnarvon, he decided to let it go for one more season. Carter, knowing this was his last shot, tried something he had not thought of before. Howard Carter used a theory of triangulation in order to locate Tutankhamun's tomb. He found all of the different places in the Valley of the Kings where objects with Tutankhamun's name had been found, and those were three different areas, and then he made a triangle 
and worked from the area within the triangle to see if he could find where Tutankhamun was buried. So he began to excavate and within a few short days he came to the site early in the morning and it was absolutely quiet and that meant something had happened. It could be good, it could be bad. In this case, it was very, very good. Finally, Carter had found something, the top of a stairway. And by the fourth day, an entire staircase was uncovered. An excited Carter telegraphed Lord Carnarvon in London. At last, I've made wonderful discovery in the valley. After several weeks of clearing rubble from the stairs, Carter had made it to the doorway and into the tomb. With Lord Carnarvon at his side, Howard Carter made a small hole in the wall that sealed the tomb. He carefully inserted a candle and stared in disbelief into the room beyond. As my eyes grew accustomed to the light, the details of the room emerged slowly from the mist. Strange animals, statues, and gold everywhere. The glint of gold. Lord Carnarvon was anxious. Can you see anything, he said. Carter answered, yes, wonderful things. And so on November 24th, 1922, a place dedicated to the dead came alive with excitement. The mighty pharaohs whose tombs are wonders of the world. A 4,000 year old mummy is found still in its tattered linen wrapping. Hieroglyphics on the walls will someday tell the entire story of this fantastic civilization. With infinite care, the world's greatest jigsaw puzzle is slowly being reassembled. Once inside, they found what was an unusual resting place for an Egyptian pharaoh. Unlike many tombs of the same period, Tut's final resting place was cramped and small, only 930 square feet. It was much smaller than those of his predecessors and his successors. The decoration on the walls also was very unusual for a royal figure. And because of all of these reasons, it is likely that this tomb was probably being prepared for someone else. Because his death was unexpected, he was put into the smaller tomb, which could be completed very quickly and then buried with many artifacts and objects that he would have used in life. Workers did not have enough time to properly decorate the tomb, so perhaps to compensate, they filled it with prized possessions from Tut's life and treasures to guide him into the afterlife. But the most precious treasure inside the tomb was not an artifact. Several months after entering the Pharaoh's tomb, Carter made his most important discovery. Tut's mummy still lay intact within. Both Carter and Carnarvon were overjoyed at their discovery, but for one, the excitement would be short-lived. Is there really a curse? We'll talk about that next as we continue with Tutankhamun and the golden age of the pharaohs.